Thank you, Joe. Um, my responsibility today is to just provide a little bit of background on NACSET, the development of the tool, um, and just a little bit on how the tool should be used. Sean will, or I'm sorry, Greg will be covering um, working the tool into conservation planning, and, and Sean will talk a little bit about some case studies using NACSET. Um, when the committee um, decided to start working on this tool, which actually goes back to 2007, um, there was a realization that livestock producers were starting to come under increasing pressure to at least start to consider the air emissions that were coming from their facilities. Um, and then taking into consideration that some mitigation strategies can be very expensive to implement. So um, the committee thought it would be important to start to work on a tool um, that would identify the opportunity for the greatest impact or um, opportunity to reduce um, emissions and then make sure that the correct management um, plan was to control um, the emission of concern and without having unintended consequences on um, other emissions. Um, because management and structural variability changes between operations, um, the tool needed to be um, site specific. So that um, being said, the goal of the, um, of the committee was to develop an on-farm air quality assessment tool that would evaluate where mitigation strategies would have the greatest impact. Um, this tool is available online and it's free. Um, the URL is provided there on, on the slide. The reason for it being online and continuing to be online and not downloadable is this tool is constantly growing and improving and um, continues to have changes. And so by having it stored online as changes and updates are made, the user is always using the most current version. The tool needed to be farmer friendly, easy for farmers to access and use on their own or to use in combination with their consultants or um, people from NRCS. And it needed to be site specific and complement other tools that are currently available. I, you can see that I have the Iowa State University Air Management Practices Assessment Tool banner um, shown there. This NACSAT tool and MPAT work in combination and complement each other. This is a, a nationwide tool, and I show this slide to show um, the number of entities that were involved in the development of the tool. It started as a USDA NRCS Conservation Innovation Grant, and all of those um, banners indicate partners who provided funding for the two, um, con the first two conservation innovation grants that have gotten us this far. And then these are all of the universities that have thus far provided um, personnel to help with the development of the tool, and you can see it goes from um, Maryland across the U.S. to California, and since um, the, the current version of the tool was completed, other universities have um, indicated that they want to start now working on the tool as um, new versions of the tool are developed. And it's important to realize that producers um, also played an important role in the development of this tool. Um, it was beta tested as it was being developed on a um, number of farms across the U.S. It is appropriate for five species. The four that are shown here on this slide um, along with horses. It targets um, eight management categories on the farm. Um, animals and housing, feed and water, collection and transfer, manure storage, land application, mortalities, on-farm roads, and um, perception. And then it takes into consideration um, seven emission categories, and scoring is a percent of the best possible um, management. You'll notice that um, there's no quantities provided in this particular um, tool, 
and it's not intended to provide quantities. And we'll discuss the results page um, a little bit later in the presentation. Um, questions are tailored so that you only answer um, specific questions that are appropriate to your answer. So questions um, pop up based on how you answered the previous question. And a perfect example of that um, would be I'm going to give up on that little green arrow. Um, at the bottom, you can see formulating for um, crude protein and the, or for, um, yeah, formulating for, for crude protein. And the user on this particular sample has selected crude protein. And then the next answer was based on the fact that that was um, the answer that they had provided. Pictures often help in making sure that you select um, consistent responses. Um, you can see that I have circled the, the X and pointed it at it with a green arrow there. If you click on the X, it will expand the picture out. Um, once you make a selection, it will be highlighted in green as it is on the lower right. And there is text that goes along with each picture to help you make the, um, the correct or appropriate response. You can see there that's um, an expanded picture. Um, for, this is the scoring sheet, and the green area, area indicates how well the current um, management and technology are working. The white area is um, indicates room for improvement. At the top, you can see that I noted there is no total score for the farm, um, and that's because the developing committee didn't know how to um, or couldn't prioritize each individual management category to um, come up with a total score. A perfect example of this is on the top line of animals and housing going across. Um, you can see that um, odor and ammonia are filled with green, and um, for this particular operation, the management and the technology are doing very good at controlling those emissions. But in the center, particulate matter um, is all white, and so there's opportunities for improvement. But if that's a um, dairy farm in the northern states using free stall housing, um, particulate matter just means, high particulate matter means that they're just doing a very good job of keeping their stalls um, dry and clean. And so it, it, addressing particulate matter in that particular um, management category might not be the best idea. However, on the Southwest, in a large feedlot, um, they may give up a little bit of the odor and ammonia the green area in that to control particulate matter where um, particulate matter is a, a higher concern. Um, when working with the sheet, you'll see in the center I've circled save or spreadsheet not complete. That means you need to go back and um, complete all of the answers. In going back, you want to either click on the top right corner where the, red, the green arrow is pointed and where it says close, go back, or um, click on the management category itself, itself, itself where the green arrow is under collection and transform. You do not want to use um, your browser back button because you will lose all of the data that you had entered thus far. At the end of each management category, as you're answering questions, it's best to save the, process, the progress so that you um, don't lose any of the information. When you save progress, you are given a, a specific URL to the data and the information that you are entering. Bookmark that URL and save that because um, that particular session will stay good and saved on the server for the next 30 days. Also, at the bottom, you can see I have a green arrow pointing at copy session. That gives you the opportunity 
to um, save your original session and then um, start over with all of that information and run then different scenarios to see how that would impact the emissions um, from that particular farm as you change management. What the tool doesn't do, it is not an emission estimator. It is not intended and should not be used as a regulatory standard. Um, these are, the scores are intended for each individual site and it's not comparable um, across sites. As I said, there's no over sco overall score provided. And as you start to run different um, scenarios, the trade-offs and the unintended consequences um, will become evident. Um, what it does do, the scores are a percent of the best possible management would produce given the physical conditions present. It helps the producers assess where they are today, and in many times um, that provides satisfaction to them. They'll find that they are doing a relatively good job of managing and controlling emissions from their farm. And by running NAXAD, it provides a baseline so that they have um, this information as they consider management changes in the future um, and will help them make um, air quality decisions. We are currently, or the NAXAC committee is currently in the process of doing some um, NAXAC trainings across the um, U.S. We are, the committee was fortunate enough to receive a USDA grant in the fall to uh, fund these trainings. We have already had three trainings in North Carolina, California, and Pennsylvania. There will be trainings um, in Nebraska in later June, Virginia later in August, and then Washington, Idaho in late summer. Um, on Nebraska, I know that that one is getting near full, um, but if you are interested in any of those and if you send me an email, I will make sure the appropriate person is notified. These trainings run a day and a half. They start out talking about the local emissions of concern because we, the committee wants these to be appropriate for um, the audience that's attending. And then discuss incorporating NAXAT into conservation planning. These trainings are intended to be um, hands-on, so they include farm visits, running scenarios, and then running on alternative scenarios to see how management practices can change emissions. And then finally, it closes with um, incorporating some of those other tools that complement NAXAT and um, improve its effectiveness. For those that can't attend um, these trainings, and the trainings are limited, we, they, they are limited to 40 participants per training, so um, it, it is a rather small number of people that actually will have the opportunity to go through those trainings. But there are these um, online resources available. Three of them, Greg and Sean, uh, put online, did webinars a year ago for NRCS. And there are four case studies that were provided through LPE approximately four years ago, but those would still be um, very appropriate and useful, and those are available through eExtension. So thank you, and I will look forward to answering any questions at a later time.